Hi guys, I have uh, Amiga 1200 with uh, Terrible Fire 1260 running on LC CPU, the cheapest CPU that you can get from eBay for like 40 bucks. And I'm able to overclock it from 50 to 94 megahertz. Actually, I have two such CPUs and both are overclocking perfectly. Uh, so I will show you a difference in a few games so we can see actually whether it's worth overclocking or not. But the answer is it's definitely worth it. Before you overclock, however, you need a power supply with stable 5 volts. And what you have to do, you have to measure the 5 volts actually here on the Amiga side and not on the side of the power supply. Because there is going to be definitely a voltage drop across this wire. So that's the first thing. The second thing is you might come up with an idea to use old PC power supply. Well, actually you can do it, but be aware of two things. Mm, first of all, um, this older power supply does not have overload or shortage protection. So if you connect such a power supply to your Amiga and you will short something inside your Amiga, then you will run through your Amiga like 20 amps and this might uh, ruin your day. The other thing is that uh, not all of the power supplies will allow you to adjust the, uh, the, the voltage for the five, five, five volt, which means you will maybe have a five volt here on the power supply, but not on the Amiga because of the voltage drop. So I recommend, for example, such power supply. I'm not selling those, I'm, I'm not sure where, who is selling those anyway. Uh, okay, I can post the link be, be below my video. But this one is a potentiometer here that allows you to adjust five volts line. So by playing around with this potentiometer, you can make sure that you are getting five volts on your Amiga. I mean, most of us heard those power supplies probably they are pretty common. Hmm, can you read it? Okay. That's all about the sales video. I'm not selling those anyway. Power on and see what's the difference between 50 and, and 96 megahertz. There are two games that I'm going to test. I'm obviously Doom and Breathless. Breathless is a really great game. I finished it. Actually, I had to play it twice because in the middle I find out that you have to preserve ammo in order to buy weapons. Still great game. So actually, I'm really surprised how good that product is, especially that I didn't account a sing single bug through the whole game. And overclocking for, for this game makes really sense. We will see it in about a second. Okay, let's first... Now I'm running at 50 MHz. 50, 90, 50. Okay, which Amiga is here? What do we have here? 50 megahertz LC revision 4. I have two such CPUs and both overclocked perfectly. Probably it's not a rule, but maybe I was just lucky. But both of those CPUs overclocked really good. Traditionally, system info, why not? Speed. What do we have here? 71 times Amiga 600. It's not a bad thing. Let's test also the Amiga internal drive in terms of speed. 2.1 MHz. I, DH1 is a drive connected to Terrible Fire. I can't test it because uh, Sysinfo will crash for some reason. I have the latest version, but it's not working for me anyway, so don't know why. Anyway, let's overclock it. No, it's a At 95, right? So it's running at 93 megahertz. I have the firmware from on the terrible fire from end of 2022. That's the one that allows you to overclock, and I have the proper CPU speed for this firmware. Let's run once again, which Amiga to see that the overclocking was really working. So it's running at 93 megahertz and sysinfo 
files that we have different. So previously we had here about 70. Now 132. So I think that it worked. It's faster. Okay, I just wanted to click something else. Drives, drives, drives. TH0, speed. Should be bits faster. 2.3 mega, uh, megabyte per second. Previously it was 2.1. The funny thing is that when I will try to uh, benchmark the drive connected to terrible fire, it will just end up with something like that and I can't do much about it. That was always the case for me. Doesn't matter which work, workbench I've been using and so on. It never worked. Okay, let's restart my Amiga so that we have clean 50 megahertz and we will start Doom and afterwards uh, Breathless to see how it runs at 50 megahertz. First we will go with Doom and then with Breathless maybe. I'm still waiting for boot. Okay, it's there. Doom at 50 megahertz. I want to show the frame counter. Games, a Doom. That should do it. I mean, you can already play at 50 megahertz really good speed. I have plenty of resolutions because of Indivision, but we are lining PAL lower res. The game's already there. Why there's no sound? Okay, there is a sound. I'm too young to die, obviously. Full screen. We are at 15 frames per second. The only problem with Doom is that you have to play it with the keyboard. Actually, I'm not used to it. There is an option to enable mouse, but it works funny because you have to move it forward in order to go forward. Unless you have a really huge game uh, mouse pad, actually doesn't make any sense. But you can eventually use it. But check out the frame counter. It's still around 13 FPS, so it's not a big deal. Uh, it's, it's, it's rather slow. Let's go to the first level. Let's see the other level. So during the game, you are running at well, definitely below 20 FPS. Uh, it's just that uh, I'm really not used to play it with the keyboard. Okay, but it's pretty obvious. We don't, we never see two. Okay, sometimes there is a two, but not three. So definitely below 30 FPS. Let's finish the game. And the cool thing about this overclocking is that it really is super stable. So I have completely speed. I have completely no stability issues. I mean, there is one thing that you have to be aware of. Um, if you have drive connected to terrible fire and you overclock, you might have some data corruption. I read it somewhere, which is not the case for me, but there is a, just a warning. So this is the official statement as far as I know. All right, new game. Haha. <laughs> 2020. I mean, not sure whether you can see, but it runs much smoother than, than previously. And it's around 30 FPS, actually, sometimes above. So it definitely worked. And the experience is definitely better. I mean, actually, you can really play that game right now. I might... Well, I didn't have time to play it because I figured it out just like two days ago that my power supply provides only roughly four and a half volts or so. And that's why that was the reason why I was not able to overclock. That's why I was talking about the power supplies before. I mean, it's actually quite important to have these five volts or some 
or rather to be closer to five volts than four. <laughs> that was a case. In, that was a case in, for my old power supply. <coughs> Let's go to the next level. See how fast is there. Actually, I played that game a little bit, and it's not crashing. I have a save. No, I don't have a save. That's another capture. That's another cut. Well, definitely faster. I think I would say that you can play it right now with me without any issues. That's something. I, I'm not sure whether you can see it on the video because I'm using this cheap video grabber connected to the vision, but but right now on this monitor where I'm playing, it's really, really good and fast. There are no frame drops whatsoever. It's super good experience. I mean, actually, you can play Doom on on Amiga right now without any issues. Breathless. CPU uh, speed fifty. Okay, you can't go back. We have to reset. But why would you anyway? <laughs> I don't have it in a user startup sequence because, well, because of this hint uh, somewhere on the terrible fire card that if you overclock CPU, you might have a data corruption. And honestly, I don't need it for the pure workbench because you see no difference. So, and most of the Amiga games don't need it either. So I can just overclock where I need it. First we will start the game, the Breathless, without overclocking. This is a really great game. If you haven't played, you have to do it. I mean, I was really surprised because back in the day when I had Amiga, I couldn't play it because I didn't have a Turbo card, just memory extension. As it turns out, this is a totally finished product from, from the beginning to the end. There is nothing that wouldn't work. The monsters are getting better. It's a really great game. Okay. Yeah. And the deal. Okay, the mouse is working. Is that you have to play rather in a such small window because otherwise you won't be hit you won't be able to hit anything. Because it's a slideshow basically. Window is one on one pixels and the resolution is 160. 100 on 100 I would say. Okay, I can play 160 so I return to game. I think that I've played, on 50 MHz this is the good size of the window to play it. I mean, it's still quiet, quiet fast. It's actually one of these games that playing on the CRT it's really difficult because the monsters looks actually like a wall so I was playing it on the um, on the LCD <laughs> well maybe it's a cheating but anyway you can the monsters uh, are better visible on the walls because they have similar colors anyway that's the window that you have to use it at 50 megahertz because otherwise there are frame drops and it's not playable. Let's go for the full screen, which is that. I mean, I don't believe that you can hit anything on the full screen. Well, I am having difficulties to hit a door. Yeah. Okay, let's have a clock and see what that changes. Yeah. What I'm really surprised is uh, how how stable it is. I should get a, this idea of the power supply a bit sooner. Then I wouldn't have to play the whole breadless on 50 megahertz, but okay. Ninety what was that? 95? Doesn't matter, it goes to 94 anyway. Mm-hmm. 
-hmm. Once again, to confirm, maybe wait a second that we are really running at 94 megahertz. Looks like it. On the end, I will start also maybe one or two demos to see that those are actually working as well. Demos that require 60, uh, 060, but uh, 68060, but doesn't require the float processing unit. sure if this video recording device is picking it up but now I can play this game it's in the window that is like two sizes bigger I'm not sure what resolution is that 256 on 160 exactly so with overclock terrible fire you can actually play that game with a larger window, which is cool. It's beyond my understanding how you can play that game on CRT. I mean, there's definitely some problem with the contrast, at least on the Sony monitor, because those monsters... It's almost the same color as the wall. That was a different story. I can definitely... Uh, Set it up. Anyway, you can play it in a larger window with overclocked uh, CPU, and that's definitely fun. And let's go for the full screen. And there is no FPS counter, I'm not aware of it. You can't still play it, okay? That's going to be a problem with this guy. Anyway, with the full size window, you, the game is still unplayable, but definitely smoother than it was at 50 megahertz. Sure. Looks nice. Yeah. Okay, let's try maybe a demo or something to see that it's stable. Mm, demo, I don't know, 060, unique horizons, for example. It, run, it runs a bit faster on uh, 96 megahertz, smoother. It's not crashing, it's just working perfectly. It works perfectly. I think that we. Okay, it shows. I think that within the next few days I will prepare another video on how to set up terrible fire that you will get most out of it and work and stuff like it. Because there are a few things that well I have to find out on the internet. There is no like a, a tutorial on how on how to set up terrible fire on workbench on workbench 3.2. No issue is here. It runs, it's stable. It's nice and warm, but I have two fans in here blowing the air through the Amiga, so it's not getting really hot, but it's getting definitely hotter than at 50 megahertz. So this one, Especially this one is a bit smoother on uh, 96 megahertz than it was on 50. It's actually completely smooth. Okay, that will be all. So, totally worth it. Try it. Maybe it will work for you. Have a nice evening. Bye bye.